Right. You know, I, I want to talk about that HD Fury. Yeah, do it. I, I ran out of time last time. It will take a little bit of time, but for anybody who's interested, if you have a projector, you may want something like this HD Fury. You'd probably need something like uh, Zadu or um, I am testing out the, um, what is this thing called? The Dune HD 8K Max. And uh, so here's the thing. If you have a TV that has Dolby Vision, right? You, you might not be interested in this whole topic. But if you have a projector, the thing is about projectors is that they are limited in their max nit capability, right? They're not reaching a thousand nits, right? You're lucky if they reach like maybe like 300 or something like that. And so you're not getting like the maximum brightness out of them. And the problem is a lot of times with HDR content or Dolby Vision content, Basically, uh, sometimes the highlights are blown out. You know, it depends on whether you have a projector with dynamic tone mapping, right? And usually projectors that are higher end have that. But if you have like an Epson, you know, 5050, something like that, 5040, I don't remember. Um, I don't have any Epsons. I just have some BenQ HT4550s. Five I have an ultra short throw from them. And they don't have any dynamic tone mapping, right? And what I found out was when testing the Zidu UHD 8000 that had this mode where you could you could set a custom EDID. And mm -hmm. what that does is it tells the player what your TV is capable of. Mm. If your TV is Dolby Vision capable, you know, what what can it do? What's the max? It, tells it. it doesn't do? you don't have to be true, it just tells it. It tells, yeah. So it tells the player what it is capable of, right? What this HD Fury can do. So HD Fury sent me the Arcana 2. I just told them what was going on. They're like, yeah, we'll, we'll send you that. If you want to test it out, let people know about it. I said, all right, I'll do that. And so that's what I'm doing. So they sent me this Arcana 2. I plugged it in to my uh, BenQ HT4550, which does not have Dolby Vision support. But the Arcana 2, what it does is it tricks the player into say into thinking that whatever's connected on the other end is Dolby Vision capable, right? Mm. So that's one aspect of it. The other thing is it you can set the max nit capability of your projector or TV, right? But you set the max nit capability, and what it does from there is it scales everything down so that it matches, right? The player will automatically do that. Um, the it does it using the Zadu does it using something called a Dolby VS10 engine, which I guess that's kind of like the Dolby Vision engine, from my understanding, right? Limited understanding. But I think what is happening is it's actually doing the 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 dynamic tone mapping within the Zadu itself. Right? It's using the Dolby Vision engine to tone map things and then output it so that it fits within the range of your projector, right? So if you're watching that scene from uh, Harry Potter where it's super bright, on my projector, it would kind of just get blown out, mm. right? But okay. because the VS10 engine on the Zidu is handling all that, and then it's spitting out what it thinks is Dolby Vision, it can use that Dolby Vision engine to kind of adjust things. And now I'm getting kind of like a dynamic tone mapping on my projector. And it's really, it makes things look a lot better. Okay. Very cool. Bottom line is you get all the colors that you would expect from something with Dolby Vision. Um, the colors just pop and just the dynamic range is maximized. Um, what else can I say about it? The other thing I like is that you can, on the Zidu and on the Dune HD 8K Max, what you can do is you can set it so that everything gets output in Dolby Vision. So right. SDR content, it will output it in Dolby Vision. So what that does is, let me back up real quick. If you're playing 1,000 nit content, it'll okay. scale it down so it fits within a 400 within 400 nits that your projector mm -hmm. can have. So you'll be able to see the entire range, right? It's just compressed. You know what I mean? Right. It's compressed, so you won't. It's just not expanded, right? Uh, SDR content is. 100 nits right 
And what it can do from there is it can expand it. And this is all stuff that I'm learning from Phil Jones at Projector Reviews. He's the expert. I'm kind of just repeating what he has told me. I should probably have him on to kind of explain this better. But he's saying that SDR content's uh, 100 nits. And by using the, the VS10 Dolby Vision engine, it can expand that out to the max 400 nits. So now stuff that is typically only 100 is is brighter, right? And that's pleasing when you're watching a brighter image, right? It's it's pleasing. I'm not saying it's more accurate, but I've tested it with some of my content where I know exact I know how I look, right? I can look at my skin tone. I know how my videos look on my uh, calibrated monitor. And when mm -hmm. I look at it from SDR converted to Dolby Vision on my projector, it still looks accurate, right? And so I think that that's pretty cool. It'll also take HDR and HDR plus, and I've tested it using um, using the Spears and Munsell disc. Yeah, and it's able to to tone map everything properly, right? So all those ten thousand nit stuff, it looks like I can actually see the the horses. You know what I mean? In that one scene, I can see the sky and stuff like that. So I, I like that. So you, it'll work. You can use the an HD Fury. You're gonna need something like the Zidu. The Dune HD 8K Max is the one that I've tried it on. I know some people are here are saying that there are less expensive Zidus that can do the same thing. Um, you can also do the same thing if you have an Apple TV 4K. Because if you've noticed on there, if it detects that your TV or projector can support Dolby Vision, it can output everything in the Dolby Vision. Right? Wow. And, and it kind of does kind of the same thing. If I were to guess... They, it seems like they're using the VS10 engine. They just don't call it that. They just, <laughs> it just it's Apple, you know, it just right. works. Um, but yeah, it, it works that way. One other benefit from that is that when you're switching from SDR content to HDR to Dolby Vision, normally the screen kind of blank blanks out for a second while it does the handshake, HDMI handshake. It's probably not as bad on a TV for you TV guys. You know, the delay when it does that handshake is probably pretty quick. But on some projectors, it can take a while, like annoying if it's annoying constantly. Amount. Yeah. And and I'm talking about like when you're watching an, a YouTube video, it's constantly switching back and forth. Every time you want, want to watch yeah. a new video, it switches. Yeah, right. Um, with this setup that I'm telling you guys about where everything is in Dolby Vision, you never get that. Right. You never get that blank, you know, blackout screen. Unless you have that frame rate where it just to the frame rate, that mm -hmm. will always uh, require a handshake. But uh, yeah, well, that's one of the benefits of using this. I just wanted to tell people about it. The, the folks at AVS are probably laughing. They're like, this guy's talking about something we've been doing for the longest time. But it's the first time I've tried it. And I feel like, uh, you know, the people who are using, what are those expensive... Uh, uh, boxes for like projectors that they use like a uh, oh uh, uh, uh vr vr mad vr mad vr i'm on right. vr friendly I'm like, i use a mad vr they'll use a computer stuff stuff like that i feel like i'm getting most of the things that i would want from that right other than the the scaling things that it does um i'm happy with the setup it's just this little box where is it this little thing Unplug it for a second. Show you guys. Just this, right? And uh, has a USB in to power it, an HDMI in, and then on the other side, there's HDMI out, right? There's also an eARC out. So if you just want to use it for um, just for the sound, so you can connect it to like you know, I don't know, sound bar or something. But then there's also this HDMI copy. So if you wanted to connect another display. You could have it copy that same exact, you know, whatever is coming out from the HDMI out, but you can also downscale that, right? So if your TV or, you know, whatever you're using can't handle that same signal, you can downscale it to lower resolution. And people find that handy for like, if you have, um, you know, like kind of like those lights, like the Philips Hue lights and stuff like that, that are controlled by the, whatever's on the screen. Sometimes they don't like, uh, I don't know, 4K 60 or something like that. So it can downscale that so it'll work. Anyway, that's it. That's my little shill piece for the uh, for this 
$350 Arcana. I think it's around $350, $360. I think it's a pretty good deal considering what you can get out of it, right? Mm -hmm. If you have those devices, you have the Zidu, you have a Dune HD. Actually, you know what? I did try it with that inexpensive one that you sent, that uh, Dune the HD Matic box 4K, R, box 4K, 4K, something like that. It's 150 bucks. And the thing I like about that is you can force it to always do everything in Dolby Vision. The UI is in Dolby Vision. Just everything is in Dolby Vision if it detects Dolby Vision, right? Uh, the Shield, I tried the Shield. The Shield does not allow that. The Shield will only yeah. put out SDR for the UI. But if it detects a video that's Dolby Vision, then it'll send Dolby Vision. It'll, it, it doesn't have anything in there to convert it like the VS10 engine. That's it. Anybody have any questions about that? That's I've been meaning to tell you guys about that for a long time. I think it's a pretty cool device. And uh, I like the fact that you can do everything here on the screen. It shows an on-screen display to let you know what the content is, like what's coming in. You know, if it's showing up as 422, 10-bit, 12-bit, 8-bit, right? And... Um, Shows you the frame rate, stuff like that, and and actually the uh, the bit rate of the audio. So all all cool things. And for the people in the forums who are using that Easy Coup, that's a twenty nine dollar device. I don't know how you guys are doing it because you have to load custom firmware in there. It's like very hacky. Is that the one Paul was used trying to use? <laughs> he was trying to use that one. That's right. I did hear you guys say Easy Coup. I'm like, what the yeah heck is that? It's what does that very even mean? <laughs> it's a very hacky thing and i i applaud anybody who can get that thing working because it's awesome if you can but for most people that don't want to mess with that this thing seems like a pretty easy easy setup and i'll probably save you a lot of time because uh paul he's i don't think he's in here today but he's very technical so if anybody can figure it out he could figure it out but even he was like dude i've spent days on this thing i'm still not sure if it's working this thing just it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, what are the comments here? I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys have to say. Any? Yeah. Any well, there's there. Uh, read through those. Do you want to um tackle this? You're talking about projectors. You want to ta tackle this question about a screen? Mm, you know what? There are other resources that I think could speak on this a little bit better. But the type of screen that you're going to want is going to really depend on the on the environment. You know. Uh, if you just have a perfectly dark room, you could probably just go with a matte white screen. If you have, if you expect to turn on the lights once in a while, you might be able to get away with using an ambient light rejecting screen, right? And there's different types of ambient light rejecting screens. There's some where it's kind of grayish and then it reflects back at a certain angle and that's what you get. You kind of have to do a little bit of research on that. Um, and then there's certain screens that are specifically for ultra short throw projectors. You know, so they have a uh, Fresnel screens, uh, lenticular screens. Um, I think the the main thing you want to think about is is your room perfectly dark, or do you need something that's gonna, uh, you know, reject ambient reject light. Some light. Do you need it to be acoustic transparent so you can put speakers behind it? All right, those are the things to think about. Um. I've always gotten stuff from Elite Screens. They're near me, so I always just call them up and say, hey, I want to test out a screen. So I appreciate that they'll, they're willing to help out. The first screen I ever bought was from uh, Silver Ticket. I still have it, and it's still awesome. So those are cheap screens. And then I think Stuart is around here, and they they have expensive screens. And I assume that they're just better as far as un uniformity. I don't know. I haven't tested those. Um, what else? Let me see other questions here. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Mosin says you can use eight NVIDIA Shield Pro with HD Fury Vroom. The Vroom is their higher end one. I think you can do more customization on there. If you want? Oh, to I thought he was just saying like Vroom, you're gonna get going. Yeah, <laughs> that's the no, model number for something. It's the higher end version of this one, and oh, um, okay. uh, if. Uh, Tim splits this up. Make sure to leave a link for daily hi-fi for our Amazon for this. You can buy it on Amazon. I think it's a little bit more expensive from their from Amazon than their website, but you get it faster, I assume. 
and you can return it easily if you don't if you have an issue. Um, yeah, the room is the more advanced one. Step up from this one and more customization if you really wanted to get crazy. I believe they have a web interface instead of using this like push button thing to go through the menu. Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.